All right, in this example, we're going to show that the equation x to the fourth equals x plus one has exactly one solution in the interval one to two. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing to note is that a solution to this equation, x to the fourth equals x plus one, I can rearrange the equation in this way. So that it's really a question of showing, does this function, x to the fourth minus x minus one, have a root? So let's let f of x be this degree four polynomial. And we want to show f has exactly one root in the interval one to two. So that's our goal here. Show it has a root, exactly one root in the interval one to two. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to work on it in two ways. The first way we're going to use the intermediate value theorem to show that there has to be a root. Could be more than one, but there has to be at least one root. So what do we know? Well, we know that f is continuous on the interval one to two. We know that f of one is one minus one minus one, so that's minus one, whereas f at the other endpoint is two to the fourth, so 16 minus three, so that's 13. So at one endpoint it's less than zero, at the other endpoint it's bigger than zero. So these conditions tell us then that by the intermediate value theorem, f has at least one root in the interval one to two. There's at least one root there. That's what the intermediate value theorem says. Because the function at one endpoint is negative, at the other endpoint it's positive, and it's continuous, so at some point it had to move from your negative position up to your positive position and cross the x-axis. So there has to be a root. We need to show that there's exactly one root. Intermediate value theorem just allowed us to conclude there's at least one root. So how do we show that there's exactly one? Well, this is where the mean value theorem comes in. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say, suppose there are two roots of f in the interval 1 to 2. So mean value theorem says we have at least one root. We want to show that there is exactly one. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume there's two. Two or more. But let's just assume there's two. Pick two of the ones. If we've got more, then just pick two of them. So we've got two roots. Let's now conclude that that's impossible. And we're going to conclude that's impossible by getting some result that's absurd. So suppose there are two roots. Well, then it looks something like this. Got one, two, there's two roots somewhere in the interval. So the function then has to pass through one of those roots and then turn around and pass through the other one. Can that happen? Well, this is where the mean value theorem comes in, or in particular Rolle's theorem, because our function obtains the same value at two different points. So what we're going to say is that, well, between those two points, there has to be a place where the derivative is zero. So there has to be a place where the derivative is zero. There's got to be some point in the interval one to two, in fact, in the interval between the two roots, where the derivative is zero. So let's see that we actually do have the hypotheses for Rolle's theorem, or mean value theorem, for which to conclude this. So suppose there's two roots, and we'll call them, let's say, A and B. Then what we have is that F is continuous on the interval a to b, because a and b are within the interval 1 and 2, and f is this polynomial of degree 4, so it's continuous there. f is differentiable on the open interval a to b, again, because f is this polynomial of degree 4, so it's differentiable everywhere. 
And I could say that f of a is equal to f of b, or I could just go straight for the mean values here. The conclusion is going to be the same. So by mean value theorem, there is a c, uh, a c in the interval a, b, which is contained in the interval 1 to 2. So the point here is that there is this value c between 1 and 2 such that f prime of c is 0. That's our big conclusion. The mean value theorem says you've got to have this number for which the derivative is 0 at it. Let's check. What's f prime of x? f prime of x is 4x cubed minus 1. Oh, so the derivative is 0 means I just have to set 4x cubed minus 1 equal to 0. And I do that, and a little bit of algebra tells me then that x has to be the cube root of a quarter. But the cube root of a quarter is not in the interval 1 to 2. It's not in the interval 1 to 2. This is a problem. If we assume there's two roots, then there has to be a place where the derivative is 0 in the interval 1 to 2. But the only place the derivative is 0 is at the cubed root of 1 quarter, which isn't in the interval 1 to 2. So what we have is a contradiction. We got a problem. We get this absurd, this absurd result. If I assume there's two roots, then I have to have that the cube root of a quarter is between 1 and 2, but it's not. So there's a contradiction here. Therefore, my assumption, which is the only thing that was done wrong here, I assume there was two roots when I shouldn't have, because there wasn't. It led to an absurd result. So therefore, my assumption had to be incorrect. So suppose there are two roots, that was wrong. So therefore, there is exactly one root of f in the interval 1 to 2. And that's where we get the exactly one part. Intermediate value theorem said at least one. Mean value theorem says no more than one. Therefore, we have exactly one root.